In my videos and on social media, I often talk about things that are happening culturally, things that are happening in our communities that have an impact on us as survivors. And if you have been following Prince Harry, um, the royal family, or Meghan and Harry's relationship, there's a good chance you've probably been watching the documentary on Netflix. And while this video today is not about them or their documentary, it is about what's happening as a result of it, which has much bigger implications than just for Harry and Meghan and the royal family. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Peggy Oliveira. Thank you for joining me. Make sure to subscribe and click the bell for notifications. So if you have followed me for a period of time, you know that very often I talk about things that are happening in our communities and culturally, globally, that have an impact, often a very significant impact on survivors of childhood trauma in a number of ways, because that's a big part of what I talk about is the impact and the healing from childhood trauma. And sometimes the ways that things that we experience in our everyday life can really significantly impact our ability to heal or the progress in our healing. So I have not watched the docu documentary and I am not, I, I don't follow the royal family. I generally don't follow celebrity stuff in general. But I started seeing um, in the last week or so, I started seeing some things where people are being really negative about both of them, but in, in particular, Megan. And it, as I was listening to some of this stuff and hearing about some of the stuff that was going on, it just felt really kind of reminiscent of what often tends to happen when survivors of trauma or childhood trauma come forward. This happened a lot with Me Too. As people came forward sharing their stories, a lot of people didn't want to hear it. They didn't want to face it. They didn't want to deal with their own stuff. And so therefore, they discounted, denied, minimized the stories that were being told. They accused people of trying to seek attention to get money for their stories. And that type of response, that type of victim blaming has been going on probably forever. It's just much more pronounced with social media and the internet and constant news. And the impact, so even though that story is not about someone coming forward about sexual trauma or childhood abuse, Although in some aspects, I suppose there was some child abuse there. Um, while that is not what kind of is happening in that story is about specifically, there's, there's a bigger implication for all people, really. And probably because of my um, interest in sociology, it was part of my major in undergraduate, I think about kind of the macro aspect of the things that we experience. As a social worker, one of the big things about social work is person and environment. So we think about the individual, but we can't think about the individual in isolation because an individual is not living their life in isolation, right? Everything is something that we take in. Everything becomes part of our experience, which again is part of the reason that we're so impacted by childhood trauma. But when we as a society are seeing these things come across our feed, if you are a survivor of childhood trauma, as you're seeing this come across and you're, you're seeing the victim blaming, you're seeing people discount the stories, you're seeing people blame Megan for whatever's happening, their decisions and the falling out in the family or whatever, but Megan, right, is being kind of scapegoated. She's the 
when at fault for everything that's happening. So as a survivor of childhood trauma, seeing that come through your feed, seeing the headlines, hearing how people are talking about her, for the simple fact that she married Prince Harry and they are living their lives the way that they want to. As you see it, even if you don't have a, an opinion about it one way or the other, when you hear the tone and you see the things that are being said or hear the things that are being said, it's reinforcing the idea that it's not okay to speak up. It's not okay to share your story. It's not okay to share the truth of your experience. There's already so much fear for people about speaking up and sharing, even with a friend. So it doesn't even have to be public, but there's so much fear just naturally ingrained for survivors to share, afraid that they won't be believed, afraid that they will be blamed and held responsible, that somebody will say, no, that person would never do that because they happen to be known in the community or they happen to volunteer for this or that thing or be the head of some revered organization. And so seeing these kinds of things reinforces that that is what happens when people come forward, when people share things that the people around them don't want to hear. And the damage that that creates is really pretty significant. So no matter what it is that you might want to share that's part of your truth and you know that there are going to be people who aren't going to be happy about it, it causes you to want to stay quiet, to actually believe that you need to stay quiet in order to be safe. Because our body doesn't know the difference between rational safety and felt safety. And the, the difficulty with childhood trauma and difficult experiences is that your body is responding. Your body doesn't have the ability to think, to process, to rationalize. So when something feels unsafe and uncertain, our body responds and reinforces the idea that it is unsafe, that really bad things are going to happen. So even though it's not related to that, even though you may have no idea who I'm even referring to, if you're seeing anything about it at all come through your feed, then it's having an impact on you. And maybe part of the impact it's having on you isn't so much about coming forward and sharing your own story. Maybe it's having an impact on you kind of on a visceral level. Maybe you're feeling really outraged. Um, and really maybe finding yourself struggling a little bit with focus or energy or not sleeping because on a subconscious level, it's maybe bringing up some of your own stuff, your own fears, even if you've never thought about sharing with anybody because it's reinforcing the reality that we live in, that it is not safe to speak up. It's not okay to go against people that are known or that people like, that people will have a hard time believing can do whatever bad or negative thing that is. So as I've talked about many times in a variety of ways, being able to recognize, again, just how something that seems totally unrelated can potentially have an impact on you is important. It's also important to recognize, again, on a societal level, that when people, whether it's us doing it ourselves or other people, and we're kind of witnessing it, somehow vilify somebody for speaking up, for sharing their story. Like I've seen on TikTok so many times that people will just share their experience about something <clears throat> And people will say, why are you talking about this? That's a private matter. It has an impact on how we all end up feeling. It reinforces the idea that there are things that are supposed to be private or family business and not talk about. But when we don't talk about things, they continue to be 
replayed generationally, right? Everybody at this point has heard of generational trauma. That happens because people don't talk about it, because they don't heal it. But part of the reason they don't heal it is because they don't talk about it, because secrecy is what matters. Protecting certain people is what matters. And that is so ingrained in us. And it doesn't have to be deliberate, intentional, overt being ingrained in us. Nobody has to literally tell us. But our experiences and our everyday life from the things around us reinforce those ideas. So when we are seeing these things and you're noticing that it's bringing up something for you, maybe it just is kind of a sense of discomfort and you want to scroll away quickly, or you notice that you're not sleeping well, you notice being agitated, you notice that you're finding yourself thinking, yeah, I can never tell. I don't want that to happen to me. Or maybe you're just noticing this kind of unease within your body. It could be because these messages are reinforcing the fears that you've likely held on to for a very long time, even though it's completely unrelated. So whether it's about Harry and Megan or a random stranger sharing something on social media or a story that you hear in the news, notice what you're internalizing about the what you're hearing, the message that you're taking from that, because it has an impact. It has an impact on us individually, and it has an impact on us in our communities and in our really kind of global way of thinking about what's okay and what's not, what is safe and what isn't. And when you are blamed, when you are, when it's suggested that somebody is lying about it, it also tremendously reinforces shame. Our own, it doesn't have to be similar to what somebody's talking about over there. It's just a reminder of our own stuff, our own fears. So notice, just notice what is there. Maybe talk about it, talk through with somebody what, what this means for you, how you feel about it. Is it bringing up anything in particular for you? I'd love to hear from you in the comments, your thoughts about it. I know that, um, and I mentioned this last time in my video, I do tend to think about so many angles around different things. And, and part of that probably is my interest in the sociological aspect of things. But the reality is that part of my interest in it is because of really recognizing the significant impact on, on an individual level, a community level, a global level no matter what it is. And yes, I'm primarily talking about childhood sexual abuse, childhood trauma, emotional trauma. But this is true for people that struggle with anything really. Racism, misogyny, addiction, any sort of emotional struggle, infertility. Like whatever the struggle is, when we hear people talk about it in a certain way, it has an impact on us, even if it's not directly related to that thing that they're talking about. So I'd love to hear from you. Share in the comments below. If you found this video helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet subscribed, make sure to do so. And click the bell for notifications. I'll look forward to seeing you next time.